Welcome to Mirror Engine. It's been a second since we've posted anything, actually. We've been ridiculously heads down producing a complete rebuild. Actually, our last video was me discussing that we were moving off Godot, our previous game engine. We've been a little bit under wraps as far as what details we've been giving out. Key reason for that, as you see in the world, there's just a lot of fluff. I can't stand fluff. And so if we're gonna put out a feature, I wanna make sure we build that trust with you because truth be told, there was some stuff in our first version of the engine that I pitched that we were gonna have in there. And we just, for a million reasons, not pointing any fingers, whatever, the feature was not there. So with that, I'm taking more of the approach of, hey, it's shipped, so it's gonna be there. And with that, we have cut out a good few features of this upcoming release. But what you're looking at now is actually a first look of the engine. We've only been testing with a very small group to start, and so this is our, actually our first public video. Think of this a bit more like a faucet drip of features that you'll be getting. And this is the first of many that is coming out. A lot more content is coming soon. A lot of what's been built are the architectural underpinnings to make sure that we do this right. Everything is mirrored. You'll see this everywhere. <laughs> it's our name, Mirror Engine. What we mean by that is everything is synced in real time multiplayer. If it's there in world, then it's there for everyone with only an exception if you add the exception to do so with more info to come there. So that's in the works. If you've been with us since Mirror Classic, you'll very quickly know that the user interface is different, less user interface, because it's the intent of if you're building a world, then you should be immersed in that world. It doesn't really make sense if, boom, all this UI very suddenly. This is our build mode. Eventually we'll likely switch this over to you actually start in play mode and it's one button press, you press the B key and boom, you go from the build mode right here where the camera is detached to your actual avatar. You're running around, you're building things or playing, excuse me. You're, you're doing whatever you actually scripted, but then you can hit B again. And actually there's no starting and stopping. The entire thing is real time as and with the intent of making it the easiest game development experience because you don't have to worry about all this XYZ stuff about starting, stopping, rebuilding. It's just a games are interactive. So why would you not be building it as you're interacting with it? That makes so much more sense. And so we hope to truly provide a better game development experience for you. I've been talking a bit. Let me dive in. If you're new to game development too, you're in the perfect spot because we're going to walk you through everything you need to start to make games. We're going to revive our Make Games in the Mirror tutorial series. Lots of content coming in the form of videos, interactive worlds, docs, obviously, you name it. Thank you for bearing with us in this timeline with this rebuild of transitioning to Mirror Engine. So first things first, for the technically minded, you'll notice down here on the bottom right, we have an entity hierarchy. If you came from Mirror Classic, we had this odd concept of a space object because everything in the mirror was a space. And so you have objects in a space, hence a space object. Meh, no longer doing that. The reason was it, it was really taking the mindset of an entity component system, ECS, if you're not familiar with it, entity components and systems, literally three things. It's not component system, it's actually component and system. So if you think of it, the most basic thing in world is that you have an entity like this good looking box we have right here, this cube. And so you create this cube that is, it's very lightweight actually. So there's a bit more behind the scenes because by itself, an entity does not have anything attached to it. Mirror Engine will do some stuff out of the box easily for you just so you can very quickly get started. In this case, it's boom, we created the entity. It's working there. You can add more to it. It also has collision and physics with that. Once we have physics fully implemented, your character will actually collide with this object. Basic defaults that you would assume if you're creating a world. There are a lot of different ways that if you want to go a bit more to an advanced use case of, hey, we should pass through this, for example, it, or it's semi-transparent, completely transparent, whatever you want to do, boom, it's there. But Mirror Engine is a little bit more opinionated in that we offer these things out of the box to help you move quickly. But at the end of the day, you can more or less punch through and then whatever you're doing there, boom, you're good to go. It's a full-blown game engine, a lot of customizability for what you would like to do. And part of that too, because this is everything mirrored, everything's multiplayer, there are some caveats with that, just the complexities of running everything in multiplayer, especially on the server side syncing, it's stupid complex some days. So with that too, I'm aiming to release things when they're really working. And so during this alpha phase, you'll notice that not everything is there. So thank you for bearing with us on that. Anyway, let me get to the point. We created an entity here. Hey, if we want to create another, then boom, we can put that right there. You very quickly just rename entities in world. I'll just name this entity two, for example. Here's our new transform menu, pretty similar to what you've seen in Mirror Classic. A bit simplified too. I don't want to throw tons of settings at you right away. The philosophy behind this is that the stuff that you want to 
do most often will be there, but it shouldn't be in your face if it's ancillary, but it's a tricky balance. So always open to feedback on this. We have our gizmos back. We have some cool hotkeys coming with that too. Switching gizmos is just pressing the number one, two, or three, and then you can move this around in world. And I am lagging. Why is this lagging? Oh, Google Drive. Pardon the hiccup there. My CPU just skyrocketed because of Google Drive, not because of the game engine. We, we are aiming to optimize this stuff from day one. Clearly Google Drive has, th there'll be issues. And just if you run into lag, chances are it may not be the engine. Just keep that in mind as you're going. It could be Google Drive. Anyway, back to this. So we are building, we have a couple entities here. And so entity component system, entity is the most atomic unit of something in world. You take a component, you attach that to the entity. In this specific example, we have a render component behind the scenes. And so this is attaching to that entity and thus this renders the box in world. Thus, systems then operate on the components. So pretty straightforward, but this is important, important contrast between other extremely node-based systems, a very hierarchical system. So we came from Godot. Godot is a hierarchical system. So ours is a bit of a different approach. ECS is common and I think it is going to be a great framework, a great home for what we do with Mirror Engine. So we have our entities here, nothing too crazy. And very simply too, one thing that I don't think we spent enough time on with Mirror Classic was the actual just mesh creation, shapes, stuff like that in world. So that's already here from day one and we'll offer a lot more with that. But of course you can modify these shapes however you wish. Very primitive, <laughs> literally primitive right now, You're creating primitives. But you create this primitive in world and you can do basic scaling, but my plan is to very quickly, on a good timeline, once we have the high demand stuff there, which you'll know is coming soon. Once those are fully implemented, we're gonna offer a lot more creation tools with meshes. Materials is already here behind the scenes, as you can tell from our beautiful land going on here. And so I will show you that very quickly, and then I'll hop back. So land is already implemented. Your space that you create will come with land, and I clearly have too much saturation on my camera settings right now, hence why that orange was not orange. But with that, hey, surprise, you can actually do quite a bit with our camera settings. We have wanted to make sure that if you are wanting to crank graphics with this, of course, Unreal is just in its own category for what you can do, but I don't believe you should have to default to like just standard cartoony or ultra plain colors. Otherwise, we want to actually give you something that looks good that you can mess with, play with, create really good, realistic looking stuff. Ignore some of these camera settings because what I was positioning for this world actually was the the first material I showed you, so hence some of these colors will be a bit off. Let me hop right back to that. More to come on land. It'll be fun. Got a lot of cool stuff we'll add there. On the side of the materials, though, if you're new to game development, materials, textures might sound like the same thing. It's very importantly not. Think of material a bit more like a container for all the settings of how something actually appears on whatever's being rendered. So with that, there can be many textures that go within the material. And so if you're used to just like a single image that you pull up, if this piece of land here was a single image, great. It'll look like this and get, we'll get more in detail on this in the future upcoming videos. But behind the scenes, there's actually four textures being rendered here. We have a normal map as well. We have a diffuse map, which is the color, or that's just the image when you think of it. A few more details to come there, but a few textures behind the scenes. And we have a lot of materials that come with this as well. So one more thing on the entity side. Let me delete these real quick. You can, of course, very quickly create an entity with our radial menu, just a simple right click and boom, there, good to go. What I think might interest you a bit more though is if you click generate up here, it's gonna ask you what is in the mirror. Let's type in, for example, let's see what we can do here. And this is gonna start to actually generate this in world down here. And keep in mind, all of this is real time. This is interactive. So if you're building a world here with your friends, with your coworkers, if you're just having fun over the holidays, creating worlds, if you're Leonardo DiCaprio and in Inception, this is all real time, you're doing it together. And with that, we have a beautiful new Forge car here, ready to roar, game ready, throw it in there, start making games, build this racing game, do whatever you'd like. And that was just from one prompt. Oh, we can do so much with this. We have a lot of things coming. And so we're very excited to show them to you. And so thank you for bearing with us over this timeline. Much more to come. Be sure to subscribe, write a comment, join our Discord. You'll be the first to know if you're on Discord. Thank you again. Cheers.